One of the big changes in payroll version 5.6 is that we've added a new employee security function that will allow us to assign users to specific employees via their selection list so that they can only see those employees on their inquiry screens, on their setup screens, and on reports. This feature, in order for it to be used, it must be turned on in payroll options. This also means that there are some new administrative services security group options for the payroll module. Let's take a look at this employee security feature in payroll. Now I happen to be in the sample company Inc. database, which uses the US payroll module. But bear in mind that the US payroll module and the Canadian payroll module are identical in every way. All of the icons are the same. All of the screens and windows that you see are exactly the same. There's a few slight differences in terms of field names, and obviously there's differences in taxes, but essentially they're the same modules. So what you will see in this demonstration applies equally to Canadian payroll. And the first thing that you need to do if you're going to use the employee security function is you need to activate it or turn this feature on in payroll setup options. You'll see on the processing tab here the ability to select employee level security here. Now this is a feature that can be turned on or off at any point in time but in order for you to access the employee level security function you need to have it selected here in payroll options. And once you have it selected there under payroll employees you will see this new icon for user security setup. In this window, this is where you assign users from ACPAC or ACPAC users that have been defined in administrative services. So these are login users. You can select a particular user that has access to the payroll module and you can choose which employees the user has access to. Now the user security feature works off of selection lists. So you can either assign this user access to all employees or access to employees that have been defined on a selection list. So for example, if you wanted one user to have access to staff employees uh, payroll versus another user to have access to managers and executives employees, employee records and payroll, you would have the ability to create, you would have to create a selection list for your staff and a separate selection list for managers and executives and assign the appropriate selection list to the appropriate user. You also have the ability to view or restrict what selection lists a user has access to see when they go to print a report or calculate payroll. The selection list finder will be restricted to the reported selection lists that are selected here. Again, this allows you to create multiple selection lists so that employees, when they're using a selection list to run a report, they can choose if you have a hundred different selection lists and you've assigned the employee to five or six selection lists because that's all that relates to that particular user, then when that user goes to look up a selection list to run a report, they won't see a finder with 100 selection lists. They will only see the five reporting selection lists that we have selected here. Now on the whole, the thing about the user security function is that it will restrict all users access to employee records, processing payroll for employees, and running reports for employees if you use this user security setup. What I mean by that is any user that you assign here to a particular selection list will mean that that user will only be able to see the employee records for those employees on that selection list and will only be able to process payroll and run reports for employees within that selection list that you select. Of course, that creates an implication for when you're creating new employees. If you're adding new employees, the new employees, you must verify that those new employees are added to the appropriate selection list. In fact, there is a behavior change now that if you assign a user to a particular selection list and that user goes in and enters a new employee, that new employee that they enter will automatically be assigned to the selection list that you select here. Now, in addition to the user security setup, or because of the user security setup feature in payroll, in administrative services, under security groups, there are new security group settings available for the payroll module. So if I scroll to the bottom here, you can see that we now have the ability to assign a user to employee security setup and to selection list maintenance. And that's it for setup enhancements of the payroll module itself. There are some additional changes in the employee setup in payroll as well. You'll notice that on the employee record, the phone number field has been relocated to another area on the general tab of the employee record. And there's new support for weekly basis FLSA calculations for US payroll only. 
Let's take a look at those very quickly. If I open up an employee record, you'll notice that the phone number appears at the top here, outside of this box where your more sensitive information is stored. For example, your social security number in US payroll or your social insurance number in Canadian payroll. This gives us the ability to add in user interface security so that we can restrict access for viewing these particular fields if necessary. We've just taken the phone number out of the area where you have the most sensitive information on the general tab of the employee record. And finally, on the pay page, you now have the ability to assign, if you're using FLSA calculations, the ability to calculate overtime on a weekly basis or on the basis of the pay frequency of the employee. And that's it for setup.